Uh, reproductive efficiency in cattle in Nigeria. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Well, we are going to be focusing more on dairy cattle, but uh, generally we are not limiting it to dairy cattle. There are some that you can infer to apply to also beef production. Uh, so like I said, I'm making it so broad. And then um, by the time we start the discussion, uh, we will see the application and then how we can actually uh, make good use of it. My name is Adibayo Shukweju. Uh, I'm actually the founder and the team lead of EMS, uh, EMSA Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Services. Uh, well, I will still introduce myself better. Uh, these are the things we will be discussing about. Uh, introduction, the status quo in Nigeria, what do we currently have? The concept of reproductive efficiency. Uh, some people may not even understand what reproductive efficiency is all about. So we talk about the concept of reproductive efficiency. Uh, there are some terms that may be new, so we have to define so that we can uh, be able to follow the, uh, the presentation very well. Then we talk about current development trends. What are the current development trends that we have even in Nigeria? Uh, means of improvement, how can we improve on what we currently have in Nigeria? Uh, what are the constraints that we have that will not make us to be able to achieve that? Then we are also going to discuss on pro pro proposed solutions to those constraints. And uh, there is something that we were about to also introduce in Nigeria as an organization uh, that will help us in it and the uh, early field breeding detection, which we are also going to briefly discuss, just very briefly. And then we'll sit down and look at the takeaways, uh, the key takeaways, and then we'll have a break. And in five minutes, we'll just ruminate on what we have learned, come back, and then have a full discussion, question and answer uh, section series, uh, where anybody can participate and contribute so that we can all learn uh, maximally from this training. So let's go ahead. Well, I'm Adebayo Shopeju from the profile you can see there. I finished my DBM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, a Master of uh, Science in Department of Biology from the University of Ibadan. And um, I've also been trying to advance my skills. So recently, I was um, awarded a professional diploma in leadership and management, um, lifestyle professional and biomedical researcher, disease diagnostician and a project manager. Well, I've been trained in Nigeria, Uganda, uh, France, Belgium on molecular techniques, biomedical research, disease diagnosis, business development, livestock management, laboratory administration and networking. I was once a country man diagnostic manager for Zoetis Alpha Initiative. Uh, I was also a veterinary diagnosis manager in chief farms, uh, a very popular poultry farm in Nigeria. And I have immense experience in disease diagnosis and livestock production and health management. Well, in 2020, I was in Rome uh, to present on step transformation, step transformation of livestock industry in Nigeria. And currently I lead a, a, a tech uh, survey organization uh, into medical, I mean, veterinary diagnosis and data gathering and application of data gathering in a, a kind of a data database uh, intervention. So uh, that is what I, currently do, I just have to introduce myself so that at least you'll be able to have an idea of the facilitator of today. So let's go straight into the business. So introduction, uh, well, from 1974 to 2020, 2012, uh, Nigerian population has been growing. And uh, from statistics that we had, we realized that about 100 million additional uh, people uh, were added to the population of Nigeria and uh, in, in, uh, extrapolating from that it has been decided it has been um, it has been predicted that by 2050 uh, Nigeria's population will be almost 400 million you know that's 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 very high for almost 400 million so as a result there will be very high demand for livestock products and the and the demand for livestock products is going to eventually lead to uh, it is it is an that is going to be like triple. Uh, that is the uh, livestock product will be triple by 2050, and because it's going to be triple, the population that is growing and some other factors like uh, higher purchasing power, uh, people are migrating from the rural area so to the urban area. So people that are supposed to even be doing the cultivation, I mean the farming, 
will no longer be there to take care of the livestock because they will have been migrating to the rural area. And then because of the higher purchasing power, uh, higher uh, number of people, uh, there's going to be like a dirt in uh, the availability of milk and uh, meat because less people are producing, more people are consuming. So there's going to be like a dirt in uh, meat and meat production. So, and that should raise a concern because we are all going to be involved. Uh, we are all going to be affected. And what are we doing to like curtail or forestall the occurrence of that? And that is the reason why we are having uh, the, um, the, the training for today. So what is the current situation when we talk about, when we look at Nigerian and cattle production in Nigeria, what is the current situation that we have in Nigeria? So uh, in Nigeria, the poor nutrition, prevalence of cattle disease, and practice of nomad, nomadic pastoralism, I mean, as well with low cattle production, these are factors that have been affecting us. And unfortunately, we don't even gather, we don't have sufficient data to tell us about the, 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 the uh, let me say, the, uh, the, the, the gravity of all of these factors. Poor nutrition, prevalence of cattle disease, practice of nomadic pastoralizing. there is no sufficient data to be able to tell us the depth and the gravity of the effect of this on our cash production, but it has been concluded and it has been proven to be uh, the reason for the low cattle production. More than 99% of dairy cattle reared in Nigeria are the local indigenous one, which is an indication that we cannot have sufficient milk because the, on the average, what the local bridge can produce is about 1.57 liters of milk. Whereas there are so many breeds outside there that are producing more. So that is another limitation. Now, there is also, there is also indiscriminate breeding cattle herd that is resulting into reproduction potential, a decrease in reproductive potential and spread of disease. Because of the indiscriminate, you can take um, uh, semen from these and uh, I mean, you, may, you can bring a male from one farm and use it to mate another female in your farm and bringing disease into your farm and, and the probably you are not even concerned about the genetic makeup of the cow i mean of the bull that you are bringing to meet the cow and that is actually affecting the genetic improvement that we are supposed to be seeing in the country well that's not the only thing that we have in nigeria um we sorry okay so Another thing that happens in Nigeria is that we slaughter active female cattle. We slaughter active female cattle, and the pregnant and I mean the pregnant ones, uh, we we don't have any means of detecting. We just take them to the slaughter, either to the abattoir or slaughter slab, and then we slaughter both the inf the, 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 the the offspring that is supposed to be born to make more number. They are also going to be slaughtered and wasted in the abattoir. In short, some of them because I've I've seen that before during my uh, abattoir uh, round, and the, it will just be wasted, and some of them will just mash them and give them to the pig, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge loss. That's because normally lifespan of uh, of cattle, a uh, reproductive uh, uh, interval of cattle is actually very, uh, I mean, very wide, and now we are wasting some of the additions that we could have had in the country by slaughtering those that are pregnant in the slaughter stand. There's also limited veterinary and extension service in the rural area. And the rural area happens to be where we have the largest population of cattle breeders. And unfortunately, they are limited and veterinary. So it's like a reverse. We are having an inverse provision. Where we need veterinary service the most is where we have the limited veterinary service. In short, that's one of the things that we are trying to achieve in our organization to be able to ensure that we reach all of those uh, rural areas and provide veterinary service to them. In a study also, the age of a dam, that's another thing. The, the growth of the indigenous uh, culture that we have is very slow. And those are the things we are supposed to work on. And we know that the cow has a limited reproductive lifespan and therefore we need a high reproductive efficiency to be able to counteract that one. And those are some of the points that we have, or let me say the current state of Nigeria that is actually 
uh, that requires an urgent attention, not just attention, but we are supposed to take a, 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 an action to be able to forestall what will likely happen in the future. So let's come to the concept of reproductive efficiency. So when we talk about reproductive efficiency, it's just the whole package of improving the reproductive capacity of our, of, of, of our, of our, of our cattle. Let me paint the picture very well. We are having very high consumption rates, but we are having very low production rates. When there is high consumption rate and low production rate, the fear is that there are some animals that will eventually go into extinction because we are just consuming. And then that one is increasing almost every day, but the production rate is decreasing. And when the production rate is decreasing and the consumption rate is increasing, the only way we can create a little balance is to make sure that our reproduction is efficient. Because if our reproduction is efficient, it may be able to make up for the, the, the reduced production rate and the higher consumption rate. So when there is imbalance between consumption and production, we go into reproduction. And that's why we are looking at this reproduction efficiency. So when we talk about reproduction efficiency, we are not talking about the optimum. I mean, we are not talking about the maximum. We are talking about the optimum. How can we optimize? Because there are some people that look at, oh, what am I going to get for this cattle? They just look at the cattle. What am I going to get? It's like this cattle is a very good milk producer. Let me focus on the meat production. And then we take so much attention into meat production. We try to maximize meat production. Whereas we are invariably tampering with reproduction of that animal, invariably. And because of that, we are not getting the optimum value. We are getting the maximum value from one aspect, but we are not getting the optimum value of that particular cattle. So we are not looking at the maximum, bene maximum benefits from a particular part of the cattle production, but we are looking at the cattle holistically, and we are talking about how can we I mean, optimally, optimally benefit from the cattle production. So that is what cattle, um, that is what uh, uh, the reproductive efficiency is all about. So let's go to the number. So number that would def def define reproductive efficiency for most herb would include 90% to 95 pregnancy rates, less than 2% abortion rates, 65, 88% and 100% of calf born, let me put it very well, 50, 65% of calf should be born at 21 days of calving season, 21 days of calving season, 88% should be born around 42 days of calving season and 100% should have been born at 65 days during calving season. So this is the number that makes up for the reproductive efficiency. So a well-managed herd should be able to achieve a, a, a about 90 to 95 pregnancy rates with only maybe one to 2% abortion rate in 65 days with ever calf that will breed early, number one, that is with the and with the first calf born around 24 months of age, and should be able to calve about yearly. Should be able to calve about yearly, and then uh, remain in herd for about 12 to 15 years with gestational period on the average of 293. So this is making reproductive efficiency. This is trying to look at every aspect of reproduction and gaining the benefits from this reproduction. So that is the concept of reproductive efficiency. Um, we go ahead. So we try to define some terms. Okay, so let's try to define some terms so that we can... So that we can be able to understand. Number one is deals in milking. Uh, calving season, calving interval, estrus detection, estrus synchronization, calf conception, calf, calving to conception interval, then reproduction, reproduction antagonism. So let's start with days in milk, uh, uh, in milk case. So these days in milk, or let me say average days in milk is just for us to be able to understand for how long do we expect to gain, or let me say to have benefits or make gain 
when our animal or cow too is in is still lactating, like producing milk. So that is the days in May. Calving season is a period. I, I I'm not sure there is any farm that actually observe this. Is a period in the year where you are expected to have your calves being born because it is actually most economical when you have your calves being born. I mean, your, your cattle, or your cows being pregnant about the same time, being maintained during pregnancy about the same time, and giving birth to calves about the same time. It, it is very economical. So, and that is when we start talking about calving season. Then we have something that is also called calving interval. Calving interval is the period between the first calving and the next calving, or let me say the period between this calving and the next calving, that is calving interval. The initial detection is the same thing as its detection. When the animal is on it, how, what is the level of percent, what is the percentage of detection of the number of cattle, of the number of cow that has come on it? Then instrument synchronization is like in, I mean, inducing the animal or the college instrument induction, inducing the animal to come on it about the same time. So farms usually do that. Then calving to conception interval is the period between the delivery or giving birth and also when the animal is going to conceive again. Then reproduction, reproduction, I mean production, reproduction antagonism is Yeah, sorry, apology, I quickly had to fix something. So as I was saying, production and production antagonism is like a belief, and uh, it's believed that when you are increasing production, then there's going to be reduction in reproduction. Or when you are focusing on reproduction, there's going to be reduction in production. But many people have proven this to be, to be, to be untrue because they, they, they've realized that there were so many factors that were not considered when all of these things were stated. So now it has been proven that reproduction actually enhanced milk production and some other form of production as we are going to eventually see uh, later on. So this is just to give us a picture or mental picture of uh, days in milk because it's a concept that we need to understand. So if you look at the first slide, if you look at the first slide, the commencement, as at the, as at the time the animal calves, there's going to be prolactin, oxytocin, and then there's going to be milk laid down. So the milk laid, the volume of the milk laid down, even on the first day of calving, is, is very high. As we can see in the picture uh, right here, in, the, in this picture, it's very high. And it keeps growing, it keeps growing. It keeps going until about for about eight to nine weeks. That is when it reaches what we call peak milk yield. And then after that peak milk yield, then it starts declining. But the decline state of the milk production is not still dangerous as until we start having it. If you look at this slide three, I think you're going to understand it very well. So you can see milk. Peak, peak of the milky is actually about eight or nine days, but it is still profitable if their cow is still producing milk till uh, around that mid, uh, mid uh, lactation. But it gets to a time that we call dry period when the production, the milk production is going to be giving the farm loss because you are feeding the animal, but the animal is not compensating from any form of production. The milk that is, the animal is producing is not compensating for the feed that the animal is consuming. So at that time, it's actually, uh, you are actually losing money. And that is why if you look at this place, they call it uh, calving to about uh, 160 days, actually about the days in milk. 
So that's when you can maximally benefit or be make, I mean, make production can be profitable. Anything after this is not so profitable, which means if you don't allow the animal to come to pregnancy so that the animal can give birth again and the calving starts again, as in the, the main production from calving starts again, the animal is not giving you the maximum or let me say you are not optimizing the potential of the animal because the animal naturally has that potential, but you are, your management is not optimizing it. And that's why we say reproductive efficiency is about optimization and not just maximizing it. So you want to maximize meat production, but you are forgetting that if you can allow the animal to come to, to be mated around this time when the milk is going down, you allow the, you, you allow the animal to be called for mating. By the time the animal is going to be calved again, this milk production comes up high again. And that is one of those things that we should consider when we talk about um, um, reproductive efficiency. So I just tried to use this to be able to explain that to us because uh, we have limited time and I want us to be able to get it. So what are the factors we should consider for a profitable dairy business? Number one is meat production. It's important for us to consider during, for us to be able to maximize uh, our dairy business body weight. Number three is reproductive performance, which is what we are deliberating on today. And why are we deliberating on reproductive performance? You are not going to be talking about milk production like I've just explained to us in the slide, the previous slide, when we don't have reproductive uh, performance, be, I mean, higher reproductive performance. We are not going to be talking about herd life. When all the animal is given to us is just staying on the farm without giving us any benefits. So what is the essence of the herd life? So, and then all the milk production too, if all the animal is given unto us is just the dry, for, I mean, the, the, the milk that is not giving a compensation of the feed that the animal is consuming because the animal is not reproducing, then it's not still going to be profitable. So all of these factors actually, they, are, they boil down to how efficient is the reproduction of that cattle that we are talking about. What are the other factors to be considered when we want to maximize reproductive efficiency? Now we are talking about we have seen the importance of reproductive efficiency. How can we now maximize reproductive efficiency? So these are the factors we are supposed to consider. Number one, the dry period length. When we say dry period, that means the time when the animal is not giving us, like I said, compensation for the milk that the animal is producing. Number two, we are supposed to also consider day open. Day open uh, is the same thing as the, uh, the calving, I mean, calving conception period, like the period between calving and then conception. So the animal is open at that time. So the question is, when are you going to call the animal for meeting? That is another thing to be considered. So, so that is another thing to be considered. So the open is like the calving between calving and then conception. Then service per conception. That, that's another factor to be considered when we're talking about reproductive efficiency. How many times do you service the animal before the animal conceives? What is the duration between the first service and the second service? Those are the factors to be considered when we talk about maximum reproductive efficiency. What's the period between the first service and the next service? And how many services do you do for a particular animal before conception? That is important. Number four is estrus or heat detection. Do you even do that on the farm? Do you detect it? Now, if you don't detect it appropriately, you are going to be wasting money in two ways. Number one is you are going to be wasting money on AI because you are going to be doing AI when you are not even sure the animal is on heat or not. Number two is that you are going to be wasting money on, um, on um, the value that the animal is supposed to have added. Because if you are detected the, uh, the eat appropriately, because there are some animals that have what we call silence eat, they don't even show it. So that animal has come on it and has gone, and the period has been wasted. When the animal is supposed to have conceived, the animal will not be able to conceive because it has silence eat. So that is another thing to consider. So eat or insurance detection is very crucial in order for us to be able to maximize our reproductive efficiency. Then we we'll talk about the in milk at first breeding. That will be able to tell us of the future of that cow and how much you should be able to pump money on such a cow. Breeding interval. 
the first, like I said, I've told us the breeding interval, the time for the first breeding, and then the next uh, uh, breeding. Then the I mean, breeding interval, so, sorry, not calving interval. Breeding interval is that, okay, during the breeding state, how long does it take you before you have your animal come to conception, to, to pregnancy? Then the calving interval is between the first calving and the next calving. So what is the period? In most advanced country, it's just one year. They expect your animal to give birth annually. That is the expectation, which is not uh, applicable or uh, is not what we have here. And then the general average in May, uh, average days in May. These are the factors to consider when we talk about uh, maximum reproductive efficiency. Sorry, I may not be able to uh, explain them in detail because I'm trying to watch my time. But by the time we come back, uh, if you have any question, you can have so that we can answer the question. So what are the current development trend in Nigeria? We have artificial insemination AI. We currently do that. We have embryo transfer. I, I know somebody that does this in, in Nigeria. Uh, we have estrus synchronization. Uh, it's also currently being done in Nigeria. And then I have just fraction of people that are also uh, actively doing early pregnancy detection in, 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 on their farm. So, very fraction, not anybody, because uh, most people depend on either, uh, what's it called? The pregnancy diagnosis using the um, rectal palpation. Some people depend on um, probably changing the color of the meal, the traditional way. And all of those ones takes months before they can even detect it. It takes months before they can detect it. So, uh, but I know some people that they said they use some ELISA kit and all to be able to do uh, have early the, the I mean pregnancy detection on their farm. So we have some of some people also doing that in Nigeria. So how can we improve on what we currently have? So it's by also introducing what I call e detection. We are as an organization we are trying to bring this to Nigeria so that you can maximally get benefit from reproduction. So e detection or extra detection is is crucial. Then two is early detection of field breeding. You should be able to detect in time if your service of using AI was successful or not. So if it is not successful, then you should be able to call back the animal for another service. And that should be done in time. Anything that is more than a month before you detect it is not good enough when we talk about reproductive efficiency. So heavy detection of field breeding also is another thing we can use. There are multiple ovulation and embryo transfer. Well. I know we can, if we start uh, working towards this, we should be able to also do this. Then in vitro fertilization, sex determination, uh, cloning and genetic. Well, in that order, we can be introducing it gradually in, in the order that I've just uh, written. So what are the constraints? Number one is that cow has limited reproductive lifespan, which we have already said. Consumption in Nigeria exists production. We have already mentioned that too. Uh, lactation cow compared with AFA, they have shorter period of estrus. So which means when a, a, a cow is lactating, it's the, the estrus, the period of estrus is very short and that may skip detection. So that's why we need something to be able to detect it also in Nigeria. So, uh, and then they have great, greater frequency of double ovulation. And because of that, there's also higher tendency of uh, pregnancy loss. Then, People that have been used to 100, 180 days calving season, it is very hard for us to say, okay, the appropriate calving season is 65 days. Walk towards 65 days. So it's going to be gradual. We can't just say, okay, this is the appropriate period. I mean, calving season should be within 65 days. And then we expect people to start working towards 65 days. So these are the constraints. And these are the proposed solution to be able to ensure that we have the uh, reproductive efficiency, we can start introducing cross-breeding, herd, herd health management, animal identification, optimal nutrition, record keeping, very important. Then we can start applying modern technology and we can go into what I call predictive or, I mean, predictive or precision farming. Now, look at this that I've written below. Regular cow production is vital to promote lactogenesis, which is milk production, and to also sustain that same milk production in dairy cow. To obtain this optimal result, the dairy cow has to conceive by three months after calving and deliver normal cows at regular interval of about 365 days, as it has been proven 
by the authors that are written there. So it's an heady field breeding detection. Like I said, we are trying to bring something like that into the country. And uh, a presentation has been done on that. Uh, I've already put the link there. By the time you have the material, you can click on the link to be able to see uh, that. And then if you are interested to participate in the project, uh, you can also send EO high to us. That's expression of interest so that you can be considered for the project. So what are the key takeaway? Uh, predicted that in milk and meat by 2050 should be a general concern. We need training and education. So we're going to do more of this. Then application of modern technology is critical, which we're also going to ensure. Consumption is in production. We have talked about the optimization of milk production through reproductive efficiency and increase in car replacement, stock profit from sales and national food security. Well, so many more to talk about. Uh, we will have a break now. And by the time we come back, we discuss more on, on this. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you very soon. So well, welcome back uh, to the second section. Um, we, we just want to uh, continue our discussion uh, so that if you have any question from discussion uh, and contribution, uh, I will actually appreciate uh, if you can raise up your hands so that you can comment or ask any questions that you have. So while we wait for other people uh, to also join us. So if you have any question or you can also type it you can type it into the chat box or you raise your hands and then you have some question. And if you have anything to contribute, uh, the floor is actually open for you to be able to also contribute uh, on what we are discussing. Well, so while we wait for that, I just want to uh, quickly talk about quickly talk about um, some of the things I, some of the things that we discussed. Sorry, I'm trying to clear something here, uh, then we'll continue. Just uh, please give me like a minute. Okay, so, So I was trying to uh, make, uh, to talk about uh, some of the ways in which we can improve on what we currently do uh, that can help us to be able to advance our production and make our production more efficient. So there are some things like uh, some factors that we're supposed to consider and we are supposed to start fixing uh, time for everything that we do. And that's one of those things that has informed this training. Because uh, I realized that most of the things that we do, we don't put time to it. And that's the reason why we even think some things are not possible. Uh, take, for example, it's easy for us to say that it's not possible for us to uh, be able to meet up with the annual calving period because of the type of breed that we have. But the question is, have we taken time to uh, attempt such, uh, such, a, such a practice and it has failed? As, is there any record of somebody that has done it before and then the person realized that it cannot work? Uh, are there no people that are thinking that because they don't want to lose their animal, uh, the, 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 the animal from you don't want to lose the animal. They want the animal to keep giving them milk. And because they don't want, they want the animal to keep giving them milk, they don't want the animal to even go for mating. And like it has been clearly stated now, if you don't give, put your, if you don't call your animal for mating in good time, the milk that you are getting from the animal, it may be to you satisfactory, but it is not optimal. 
because you the, the milk you are getting is going to wane and once it wanes you think you still keep getting milk but it's not giving you the optimal uh, value that you could have got from that same animal if you had only applied uh, some of these principles because by the time you allow the animal to go into mating uh, the animal will come back uh, to calving and the milk production will shoot up again. And by the time you look at, compare what you realize if you attempt such, and then what you realize uh, if you do not uh, apply uh, such, then you realize that it's better for you to do, to do that. Because let me try to paint the picture so that you can get it very well. Now, let me go to that slide so that you'll be able to understand uh, what I'm trying to say. So let, let's, let's come to this slide so that you'll be able to see, uh, see the picture yourself. Okay, so uh, if you look at this slide now, uh, let's, let's come to this third slide. Now, the peak of milk production is um, here, yeah, around nine weeks. Uh, the then you start dropping, and then you are still going to get a very good uh, lactation uh, till about 20 weeks. Now, you are expected that the, if, you, if you do the 85 days of introducing an animal that has already calved back into, uh, what's it called? Back into, that's about three months. If you introduce the animal for a high or for mating, around um, 90, 95, 95 days, I mean, 85 days is about uh, close to three months, not exactly three months, but close to three months. That you realize that it's, it is going towards, because 20 times seven is going to give us 140. So by the time you your animal, the hormonal thing starts working on the animal, you will have realized that, you will have realized sufficient milk from that, uh, from that cow, to, from that cow so that by the time the cow, is, uh, the cow is calving again, you can see the milk will shoot up for you to be able to realize more milk. And when you realize more milk, that's going to be more money or more value. But if you allow it to wait until it comes to, let's look at this slide, I mean, the second slide, until it comes to the dry period, you realize that you are just making loss instead of making gain. And that's the reason why we usually advise that we should try and make use of some of these things that we learn uh, from the advanced uh, situation. Even if it's not going to work, let's attempt it and see if we can achieve it. And if we cannot achieve it, what modification can we do in order to be able to achieve uh, what we have? So in every way, reproductive efficiency is very crucial uh, to be able to, uh, in order to be able to get the best that we, we actually need from, from our herd of cattle. I, I didn't state this in the previous uh, uh, section. The evaluation of complete and accurate bleeding and the uh, heat detection record can assist the dairy producer in achieving maximum reproductive efficiency in the herd. So if you can keep records of all the activities in, on your farm, it can also help you to modify your activities in order to be able to get the best from your animals that you keep on your farm. So record keeping is important. That, that's, that's, that's what I want to bring out of it. Now, the second part is heat detection and conception rate. They are most important factors when we talk about reproductive performance, heat detection and conception rate. So if you can, detects it in all your herds, I mean, in all the animals in your herds, and you can have a successful conception when they are mated, it is going to improve your reproductive performance. So those two things are important because if your, uh, what's it called? If your concept, if the, con if the conception is going to be okay, you must first of all detect it. If you cannot detect it, we will not be talking about conception rates. So that's the reason why I... So 
So as I was saying, so as I was saying that if we look at the two, its detection and conception rate, those are the two factors that must be considered in order for us to be able to get the best from uh, from our reproductive uh, the reproductive efficiency that we are talking about. And it's not compulsory that we want to put all of those things at once. We may take one factor and apply, another factor and apply. So by the time we take each factor and apply, then we'll be able to get the best from what, uh, what, we, what we have discussed today. Sorry, I'm trying to, okay, yeah. So this is uh, about the project uh, that I discussed which I discussed in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, part of this training. Uh, so the, the, this project is going to be coming up in Nigeria. Like I said, we, actually what we're doing in our organization is that we try to introduce, um, um, we try to introduce modern technologies to be able to help in improving livestock production generally and this is an opportunity also for us to be able to have uh, this in the country uh, like i said there are two things that we are trying to achieve with this number one is early detect i mean accurate detection of heat and early detection of field breeding so if you can detect it very well and now that you have understood the importance of heat detection, so if you can detect it very well, and at the same time you can have accurate, uh, you can also detect in time that oh, the servicing that I did or the AI that I did in this cattle did not succeed, then you can say okay, let me take the animal back for another AI. But it is when you detect it in time that it's going to reduce the cost that you will have lost by feeding the animal when the animal is not actually giving you what you expect from the animal. So breeding, I mean, I mean uh, detecting a failed breeding in good time. And like I said, the ideal time is to detect anything before one more because of another cycle of that animal. Because when the animal comes on it again, you'll be able to now service the animal. So, Within one more, you should be able to detect it. And that's one of those things that we are trying to achieve in this project. So if you, uh, like I've put the email address there, in, in case you are interested to participate, you can actually put, uh, send your uh, expression of uh, interest to the email address that I've put there so that uh, we can take the discussion from there and further our discussion so that we can also be able to have people participating. Oh, before I, uh, lest I forget, uh, it's also time for questions. So please, if you have questions, like I said, you can please raise your hands up and you'll be given an opportunity to ask your question or you can send in, you can send in the, a message and then you'll be given an opportunity to ask your question. Or you can unmute your mic uh, so that you can ask the question that you have. Um, so I think I'm just trying to wait if there is going to be any question. So uh, while the training continues, this is just the first aspect of the training. Uh, we are still going to bring more of such training so that people can really understand how to improve uh, the, the, the reproductive efficiency on their farm. If that is actually the goal. So we'll be bringing more training in order to give people insights on how to improve uh, reproductive efficiency on their farm. So if you have any questions, comments, contribution, uh, you can unmute your mic. Uh, let us hear from you. And if you have any question, and you can also type it and send it to us. So I'm just going to wait for about uh, two to three minutes. And then um, if there is no question, then we can call it a day.
So any question or comments? So about the material, um, I'm going to send the materials to us uh, so we can go through it. And um, if you have any question, you can actually send email address. I mean, you can send email to the email address written there, or you can also contact us through uh, the mobile phone number, or you can also share your thoughts on our LinkedIn page and also on uh, other social media platforms. So if uh, there are no questions, uh, we we'll want us to wrap it up now so that we can, okay, I think uh, some messages are coming in. Okay, so Thanks for the lecture. Have you considered embryo production in the lab by ICSI intral cytoplasmic sperm injection? Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, it's, a, it's a good uh, contribution. And I think I, I mentioned something like that during the presentation. It's one of those things that we are, uh, we are hoping that it should be in, included. Uh, but if you are still on this platform, uh, I think uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, is it in Nigeria that is, this is being done? Uh, because uh, I know of, um, I see, uh, I know of, uh, of somebody that is into it, but I'm not sure the person has a lab in Nigeria. So if you are still on this call, please, we would like to hear from you. Uh, let's just have an understanding if the lab is actually in Nigeria and it's being done in Nigeria. Uh, because um, I think my discussion with the person that is doing embryo, embryo transfer in Nigeria, uh, I think he said he usually imports the embryo and then use the embryo on, on cow. So, but now that I'm seeing the lab, um, if you are still on the call, please uh, let's have your thoughts or your take. You can just unmute and let's, let's hear from you, please. Doctor in the BC. Are you still there? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Hello. Yeah, yeah we can, can hear you. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. We can okay, hear you. thank you for your wonderful contribution. Okay, thank you for your wonderful contribution. I want to state that in as much as we have considered IVF, in vitro fertilization. Uh, ICSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, is another option that we can also try. Yeah. Because if we can do IVF in the laboratory, then with appropriate equipment, we should be able to do ICSI in the laboratory. Uh, it's a training we had, I had in, the, in Japan, and they have used that in improving their local cattle, their indigenous cattle. So, but you know, funding and the lab lack of laboratory equipment to run these studies are part of a constraint. Even the IVF we are talking about, we still need a standard lab to do that. So while we are considering all those uh, assisted reproductive technological technology options, we should also think in that direction too. Yeah, you're right, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for the contribution. Yeah, so I, I know because I, I've tried to uh, kind of uh, discuss with some people that are into modern technology in Nigeria. I know uh, some of them have shared their thoughts and some of the constraints that they have. Well, so that's actually the purpose for this. Uh, we are hoping that we'll be able to uh, use this opportunity to generate uh, sufficient agitations and uh, be able to uh, call attention, necessary attention, so that we can help to build uh, the, 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 the build the livestock sector uh, in the country. So that, that's the reason for all of this. So if we, you have a modern technology that you think we can apply, or you have a connection or network that can also help us in the country, 
Yeah, we can bring you on board. We can have a full discussion like this so that people can be aware and informed and they'll be able to know where to go to for assistance and help when they need it. Uh, the main goal is that we'll be able to have a future uh, for generation being fed. And it's not going to be because of our own inactivity and inertia that uh, future generation will be affected from uh, proper nutrition. So that's the reason for all of this contribution. And uh, like I said, if you have any idea, connection, network of valuable uh, reproductive uh, uh, assisted technology that we can, we can apply in the country, please let us know and uh, we can bring you on board so that we can have the discussion with, uh, uh, with people that are actually the livestock practitioners uh, and be able to improve on our reproductive performance, uh, especially of our cattle. So if there are any other questions, comments, uh, before we call it a wrap. Hello. Yeah. yeah, somebody is talking. Yes. Um, good day, everybody. And I like the productive session. Um, the last person that spoke about yeah. um, ICSI, it's a beautiful idea, but I want to share a personal experience. Okay. Right now, Brazil is on the top of the food chain where cattle production is concerned. And what they did was the domestication of the simpler techniques. Uh, we shouldn't ignore these more advanced techniques, but we should try to popularize the simpler ones. Yeah. Like instead of, uh, instead of uh, IVF, if we do embryo harvest and then implantation, this is a lot easier. This is something that you can easily scale up to even the local producers. Right now, Nigeria is focusing on improving our productivity. Yeah. So if we do that, when we have cooperatives, it's going to be private sector driven. Research is private sector driven in a lot of places. We know how inefficient our government researches have been. You understand? So what I think we should do is how to empower people to absorb the simpler techniques of basic embryo transfer, artificial insemination, and some of these simpler things. You don't need a, 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 a exotic labs to set up some of these things. There are things we do on the field. So I think for this period, we should focus more on technology transfer to the field people, which is less of the very high tech things. And then eventually, we get to, 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 to where we have enough resources to set up proper labs, and then we can do we, we can go ahead and do the way of the advanced. Well, that's my submission. Thanks. Yeah, thank, thank you for this contribution. Yeah, well, to be very candid, this uh, is, all, is very important because we, we are not, from the lecture I just presented, we, we have rural people dominating cattle production. So if there is anything we are developing, it should be to, in their own interest, not in the interest of the commercial, because the commercial people are just holding 1% of our cattle population. The majority is to the smallholder farmers. So anything we are developing should be towards their in interest. So I, I, I think I really appreciate your contribution to it. As much as we want the very advanced one to be able to uh, scale up uh, our reproductive performance, if we can have uh, a lower advanced one that can give us equivalent of the very advanced one, it is an option to actually consider. So thank you so much for your contribution. Yeah, I don't know if there is any other thing uh, before we, we call it a, we call it a day. Any other contribution? Any other? Uh, well, just let me say that uh, next week uh, we're going to be having another session, but not on cattle this time around. It's going to be on poultry. Uh, session on cattle is going to be uh, it's going to be coming up. Uh, that should be next month, uh, hopefully. Uh, I think I'll just look at my calendar and see the exact dates. I'm not too sure, but follow up on, follow us on our social media platform as it has been indicated on the screen uh, so that you can also be able to have an update on our training session. Well, on behalf of FEMEX team, I want to say thank you very much uh, for all the participants and for your contribution. So for those people that are interested in poultry, uh, I will see you by next week. We are going to be bringing 
somebody from Zoetis Alpha Initiative uh, that will be presenting on uh, poultry next week. And it's like a war against um, uh, antimicrobial resistance. So that's what we'll be discussing on. I think uh, it, it's going to be a very gradual guide on how we can move from the antibiotics leading poultry birds to uh, antibiotics free poultry bird production. So more of that will be discussed uh, next week by our guest speaker from the Zueti Safa Initiative. Well, like I said, thank you very much uh, for your participation, for all the participants and for all that have contributed. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's go and make a difference in our respective uh, niche. Thank you and uh, bye for now. Thank you. All right.